So welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 80 so much before so today guys I wanted to do a big comprehensive review of the top five leagues. We're gonna go through all the top five leagues I'm gonna go through the European spots Relegation and all that like I said guys So if you're new out here, please consider that like button hit the subscribe button as well And like I said guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started guys. So let's start with the Premier League of course of course the Premier League so um, Let's go into this guys. Let's go into this So let's look at look at this right here so we have the main battle. Let's talk about the title race first. So we're going to talk about the title race, the European spots, and the relegation. Let's start with the title race. For me, the title race is between Arsenal and Manchester City. We all know this already. Let me make the screen a little bigger for you guys. It's a little small. And as you guys can see, this is, I think this is good. This is good. So as you guys can see right here, guys, Arsenal is on the top of the table with 75 points. Man City is second with 70 points. Now, I'm looking at the fixtures very carefully. Arsenal play Manchester City tomorrow at the Etihad, which I don't think I'll have enough time to do a preview video for, so I maybe will try to drop a YouTube short um, just before I go to bed, so stay tuned for that. Um, give you guys my prediction. Anyhow, for that game, is going to be huge. It's going to be a massive, massive game at the Etihad, and Arsenal basically have to win. They basically have to win at the Manchester City Stadium because I'm looking at Manchester City in particular. They're in superb form, superb form at the moment. And I'm looking at the games that they have remaining in their schedule. The only real difficult games they have is Bright, excuse me, Brighton and Brentford. Brighton away and Brentford away. Those are the, those are the two tough games. Uh, those are the last two games of the season. So that's going to be very, very interesting to see how Man City approach that. Because for me, they should be able to beat Chelsea. They should be able to beat Everton. They should be able to beat Leeds. And they should be able to beat West Ham. And they should be able to beat Fulham. And so, like I said, guys, this City Arsenal game... They may not even have to win that game, per se. You know, whereas for Arsenal, they very much have to win. They pretty much have to win that game. And the thing is with Arsenal is that I'm looking at their fixtures very carefully. That even if they beat Man City, they play Chelsea. And then what if they, you know, you know, uh, you know, and then they play Newcastle away and the Brighton home. These these games are going to be tough. And the Nine of Forest, team has battling relegation. And the Wolves. That Wolves game may be a dub robber because by then Wolves may have already secured their spot in the Premier League. But the point remains is that there's still lots of games to go for Arsenal. And that, that Man City game, even if they, you know, win that game just somehow, right? They can, um, they may still fumble the bag against, like, you know, Newcastle and Brighton, per se. So, yeah. Now, as far as top four is concerned, I think top four is done. I, I don't see any change to the top four. Because I feel like for me, Newcastle and Manchester United have been too, they've been very consistent enough throughout the season to establish themselves. Now, I'm looking at an interesting battle for the 5th and 6th, though, and 7th. Because it's going to be interesting. Because Aston Villa is making a strong argument to finish in the top um, 4. And I'm saying this right now, guys. If Unai Emery gets Aston Villa into the Champions League next season, even Europa League is done. That is incredible because this was an Aston Villa team that was literally languishing in the relegation zone under Steven Gerrard. This was a team that was terrible, absolutely terrible. And I think that win they got over Chelsea has galvanized their season. That has galvanized everything because that was a crucial, crucial win away at Stamford Bridge. And since then, they have been amazing. They beat Leicester City away. They beat Nottingham Forest. They beat Newcastle. They got a draw, draw against Brentford. And then they beat Fulham. They beat Fulham. Now, for me, what's really critical is that that um, is that Tottenham and Liverpool game, and even that Brighton game, because that for me is going to be very interesting to see how that pans out. Because they're gonna they're gonna most likely lose to United. You would imagine that Wolves game. They can they may win that game, but those last three games are gonna be tough, you know. And I think for Aston Villa, can they overachieve? Because remember, guys, last time they lost was against Arsenal. That 4-2 defeat at home, February 18th, that was the last time they lost. And that was a huge, huge, um, like I said, that win over Chelsea, I think, has changed everything. You know, so it's going to be interesting. And I'm going to show you guys the odds. We're going to look at the odds. Um, There's this website I have that I'm just going to show you guys the odds here. You know, now for Tottenham, I actually genuinely think Tottenham might be in a position where they don't even get European football. Tottenham have been so bad at the moment. They just uh, hired... Ryan Mason is their coach. They sacked Stiali, um, their assistant coach, uh, Conte assistant, and they just got smashed by Newcastle. They got smashed. So, and they're playing United on, on coming up on Thursday. So, 
I, I just feel as though for Tottenham, man, it's looking really rough at the moment. Really, really terrible. You look at the goal difference. It's so bad. Seven goal difference is really bad. I just think Tottenham is in a position where they may not even get European football. Liverpool. Let's have a conversation about Liverpool. Because Liverpool, for me, they can still get European football. Because they play West Ham away, which they should win. But West Ham have been difficult this season. So, you know, you never know with this team. Then they have Tottenham at home, which is a very crucial game. I think they'll beat Tottenham. A fuller game is going to be important. And then they play Brentford, then Leicester, and then Aston Villa, and then that's the Southampton game. For me, what's very critical is that Brentford-Aston Villa game. For the battle for top six. Okay? Because that, for me, is going to be crucial games. Then you have Brentford, Brighton, that's here with 49 points. Then Brentford and Fulham. Yeah, I mean, for me, the real main contendees... For this, uh, for the top seven, is that Aston Villa, Spurs, Liverpool, and Brighton. I think these are the four main contenders. I think three of these clubs will get European football. One of them is not going to get it. And for me personally, this is how I think is going to finish. But they'll look at the predicted standings in a bit. Well, actually, I want to look at relegation. We'll look at predicted standings. So I believe fifth place is going to be um, Brighton. Actually, I'm going to say fifth Aston Villa. I'm going to say Aston Villa finish fifth. You know what, guys? I'm going to change my mind. Actually, I want to look at Brighton's fixtures before I even look at this. So, Brighton, let's see who they have. They have Nottingham Forest away. Then they have Wolves. Then they have Man United. Then Everton. Then Arsenal. Then Newcastle. Then Southampton. Then Brighton. Then Man City. Then Bri uh, Aston Villa. Uh, man. I mean, Brighton, I mean, they should be able to beat Southampton. They should be able to beat Everton. And they should be able to beat Wolves. I'm not sure about the Nottingham Forest game. I'm not sure about that one. See, my thing is, can Brighton beat um, Nottingham Forest? I think if Brighton can beat Nottingham Forest, that's going to be massive. Because for me, Brighton is in a good position. But my worry concern is that they have a lot of tough games still to play. They still have to play Arsenal away. They still have to play Man United at home, um, which is going to be tough. And then they still have to play Villa and the Man City. So, I'll say Brighton finish fifth. I think sixth will be Aston Villa. And then 7th will be Liverpool. I think Spurs will finish 8th. Okay. Now let's go look at the relegation scrap. So as you guys can see, these are the following clubs competing. I think Crystal Palace is safe. So I think for me, Wolves is also safe as well. I think Wolves is in a good position. With that win, they just got over um, Crystal Palace. I think they're fine. Now it's going to come down to those um, uh, 7 teams. They're battling for relegation. Southampton's going down. I, I think they're going down. I'm, I'm very confident saying this. Who's going to join Southampton though? Because, for me, I look in the fixtures very carefully. Nottingham Forest, they have um, Southampton. That's going to be huge. Because, for me, Nottingham Forest is doomed. I just don't see them many beating Brighton. I don't see them beating Brentford. I don't see them beating Chelsea. Actually, they might get something against Chelsea because Chelsea has been so bad. But, they, I don't see them beating Arsenal. And I don't see them beating Palace. This is the, this is the last winnable game. So, I think, for me, Nottingham is doomed. Now, Everton. Everton's a very, very tricky position because Everton have Leicester City away. That's going to be a very crucial game because Leicester and City and Everton are battling out. And then Bournemouth. Bournemouth is also there as well. I mean, personally, guys, I think Nottingham will go down. At the 18th place, I'm going to go with Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth will go down. I feel like, yes, they've been in good form. But I feel like they're going to lose. I feel like that Southampton game is going to be a very crucial one. And then the Everton away at the final match day could be very interesting. And then they also have to play Leeds. You know? I, I just feel like as though that... I, I feel like Leeds and Everton will beat Bournemouth when the time comes. And I just don't see them beating Chelsea and United. And I think Palace will also beat them as well. So, now, if they can beat Southampton... Oh, that's going to be big. They have to beat Southampton. Because I think if they draw that game, oh, it's looking tough. It's looking rough for them. Because they're going to be on 34 points. And Everton's going to be, um, sorry, it's either going to be on 35, or 25. So, for me, they have to win that. They have to win that. So, now let's go look at the odds before we move on to the next league. Let's go look at the odds here. So, Global um, Club Soccer Prediction. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to look at this. So, this is the Premier League. Let's look at the Premier League right here, guys. So, 
Manchester City is odds is 77% to win the league. They're expected to win the 77%. 23% for Arsenal. The top four, as you guys can see, is going to stay as it is. I think United will finish third. I also agree with that. And Newcastle fourth. They finish, they're predicting fifth to be Brighton. Sixth, Liverpool. Seventh, Aston Villa. And eighth, Spurt. Uh, seventh, sorry. Seventh, Aston Villa. Seventh, Tottenham. And eighth, Aston Villa. Okay. Yeah, as I said, I agree with that. I agree Brighton will finish fifth. And I think Liverpool... We'll get six. I think Liverpool is in a good position. Um, actually, I think Liverpool will get six or seventh. I think I said seventh for me. Um, and then the relegation scrap. They're going to go Southampton and Nottingham and Everton. They go with Everton to go down. I think, yeah, because Everton's not been great, man. Everton's been looking bad. And they have Leicester to barely survive. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what pans out, guys. And yeah, man, Liverpool, man, the thing is about them is that they can get results even when they don't really particularly play well. So those are my thoughts on the Premier League, man. Let's go ahead and quickly move on to the next league, guys. This will be a very long video, guys. There will be time to the description below, guys. And I want to move next to La Liga, guys. Let's quickly discuss La Liga here, guys. La Liga, La Liga, La Liga. So, 11-0-3. Okay. So, as you guys can see right here, guys. Barcelona have already won La Liga. Barca have already won it. The, the, you know, the, the, we have to give respect to Xavi on that, what he did for Barcelona. I will do a separate video, and when it's official, I'll go deep down and everything like that. But for right now, Barcelona will win La Liga. That's obvious, you know. Real Madrid, they're going to also get Champions League football. Atletico Madrid also get Champions League. And for Real Madrid, they have to win the Champions League this season. If they don't win the Champions League this season, this season is a massive, and I mean a massive failure. Because, I'm sorry, you didn't win any major competition. Club World Cup, UEFA Super Cup is not a major competition. Okay? It's a good additions. It's good trophies. I mean, it's not trophyless. And if they win the Copa del Rey, which they should, it's still a good season. But it's not a very good season. And this will be very disappointing. Because Real Madrid, as I said, if they win the Champions League, this whole season is... Then they can... It's saved this season, you know? Atletico Madrid. They've been amazing. Joao Felix... Departures actually saved this team. I think Joao Felix has actually been a. I think him, without him, they've actually done really, really well. I'm looking at great players like Griezmann's been in form, Morata's been insane, and you know, I feel like this Atletico Madrid team is just playing with so much freedom and mobility, and they're just looking so good. And remember, guys, Barcelona was the last team to defeat them. They were in a 13 game unbeaten streak after that Barcelona loss at the Juana Metropolitano, and they've been amazing, absolutely superb. And so, you have to give credit to what Simeone is done with this team. Now, I think the fourth place battle is really interesting. We have Sociedad and Batiz battling out, and Villarreal as well, and Athletic Club. For me, Osasuna, I don't think I have enough to, I think it's too much, too much to ask. They're five points behind. I just don't see it for, for Osasuna. Now, I think the thing is for Real Sociedad is that they got to draw away Real Batiz. That is a very, very crucial point because I'm looking at Real Sociedad's fixtures, right? They have Osasuna away, Real Madrid at home, Girona, Almeria, Atletico Madrid, and Sevilla. Real Sociedad still have a lot of tough games to play. They still have to play the big three in Spain, um, respectively, two away and one at home. That, for me, is going to be very interesting. I think, for me, what's going to determine Real Sociedad's fate is that whether they can get one of these wins. If they can get a win against one of the big three, then I think they're going to secure top four. You know, because the thing is, they're um, seven, six points clear. Of Real Batiste. Six points clear of Real Batiste. And you look at Real Batiste fixtures. And Real Batiste have been amazing. Pellegrini's done a fantastic job with this team. And Real Batiste, they still have to play Barcelona away. Then they got to play um, Athletic Club, Raya Valcano, Sevilla, Getafe, Girona, and Valencia. Real Batiste have the four easier fixtures. But I think the thing is, can Real Batiste get those wins? Because for me, what's crazy with Real Batiste is that they're a good team. But they keep dropping points unexpectedly. Like, for example, they lost at home to Cadiz. Then they... Okay, losing to Osasuna isn't too bad, right? But that loss, like... And then, like, they lost to... um, What is it called? Which other team? They lost to Celta Vigo at home. You know, there are teams that they shouldn't be losing to, right? And I think for Real Batiste, they just have to be very... They just have to win those games that they should. They can beat Getafe, beat Valencia, and they can, you know, th those kind of things, right? Because if they can beat um, those kind of teams, then it's going to be important. And they also need to try to get something against Sevilla and at Athletic Club. Okay? And they also have to try to get a draw against Girona. So I'm still going to go with Real Batista to finish fourth, even though they're six points behind. 
because I think Real Sociedad just have way too many tough fixtures. But I will say this, though. If Real Sociedad can beat one of the big three in Spain, they might just secure it. Villarreal, for me, I like this team. I think this team plays really well, but this team drops too many unexpected points. This is, they're also very similar to Real Batista in the sense that they can beat Real Madrid, but then they lose to Valladolid. Then they lose to Sevilla, right? That's the problem with this team is that there are games that they should win, but they don't win. And then there are games they shouldn't win, and they win, right? And I'm just looking at the fixtures. Like, they got, they should beat Espanyol. They should be able to beat Celta Vigo. They should be able to beat Villarreal. I mean, sorry, Valencia. Athletic Club. Now, that could be tricky. The Girona. That could be tricky. Cadiz, they should win. The Raya Volcano is tricky. And then they got Atletico Madrid. You know, this is the thing with Villarreal is that they are they're a good team, man. So, for me, this is how I think it's going to round up. I think fifth will be Real Betis. Sixth, I think, will be Real Sociedad. I think seventh will be Athletic Club. Um, no, sorry, yeah, six will be Villarreal, and I think seventh will be Athletic Club. I think the top seven is going to stay as it is. I just think for me, Osasuna and Girona, they're going to push for it, but I think they're going to just fall short. I think they're going to fall short, guys. And yeah, actually, let me look at Athletic Club's fixtures real quick before we talk about relegation scraps. So they, they play Sevilla next, Mallorca, Real Batiz, that's going to be interesting. Then Villarreal, the Celta Vigo. Then, yeah, I mean, it, it's looking tough for Athletic Club because they have to basically... Actually, to be fair, it's not really that difficult in the grand scheme of things. But actually, yeah, it is. It is because they have to. They have to get something against. They have to beat Real Betis and get something against Villarreal if they want to get top four. Uh, but I still think seventh will be a good achievement for them. Now let's look at the relegation scrap. Oh my goodness me, man, Valencia. Oh my god, Valencia, Valencia. Where do you even begin? I think actually before we even talk about Valencia, let's look at the let's look at the teams competing. For me, I think every team above Sevilla is safe. I think Celta Vigo onwards is not safe. I think Celta Vigo should be fine. Six points clear. I think they'll be fine. Now I'm looking at Valid lead. They're looking rough. Cadiz, Getafe, Almeria. I'm saying this right now, guys. Getafe will survive. I can confidently say Getafe will survive because yes, their attack is terrible. They're not a good attacking team whatsoever. Their defense is pretty solid. They don't concede a lot of goals, and I think that's going to help them a lot. I think those draws that they're going to get will help be enough for them to survive. I think Valencia will also survive. Despite how bad they have been, Peter Aleb has destroyed the club and everything. They still have some quality players, like you got Elex Mariba, you still have Yunus Musa, you still have Edison Cavani, you still have Jose Gaia, you still have these co-players. Co just I think the problem for Valencia is just they don't score enough goals. I think that's a really big issue with this team. And you look at the goal difference, only minus four. So, you know, those are some crucial games they have. Because for me, Valencia, for me, they have, like, these set of games will be crucial. Valladolid and um, Cadiz. If they can pick up wins on both of those games, which they should, with the quality players they have, I think they'll be enough. And then, obviously, they also have Espanol at home, which is also going to be important. Okay. For me, LJ is doomed. They're going to go down. Now, I'm looking at... um. Cadiz. Let's look at Cadiz's fixtures. Cadiz is looking rough. Cadiz, they have Valencia. Then they got Atletico Madrid, Mallorca, Valladolid, Villarreal, and Celta Vigo. Elche. Elche in the final match today could be very interesting for them. Because Elche may have already been relegated by that time. So, they could look at that game as possibly a free three points. And Celta Vigo, if they survive that game. So, I think Cadiz will find a way to survive. I think they'll find a way to survive, guys. I think they'll find a way to survive. You know, I just feel like they're going to get those wins. As much as I don't want them to do it, they're going to find ways. They're going to find a way to survive. So, really, for me, I think it's going to be... I think Espanyol will go down. I Looking at their fixtures in particular, Espanyol have some tough games coming up. They got to play They got to play um, Villarreal, which is going to be tricky. Then they got to play Getafe. We know how defensively solid they are. Then they got to play Sevilla. Then they got to play us. Then they got to play uh, uh, Rayo Valcano, Atletico Madrid. Luckily for them, though, the last two games are good games for them, which they have um, as Valencia and Almeria, respectively. But by then, it may have already been too late. So, for me, this is how I actually think it's going to finish. I think 20th will be Elche. I think 19th will actually be Espanyol. And 18th, I think, will be Almeria. I think Almeria is going to go down, guys. I just feel like, for me, they just can see too many goals. And I'm looking at their fixtures. They got Getafe away, Real Madrid, Elche. They could get something against Elche, I will say this. Also, Suna, no, Mallorca, I don't think so, Sociedad, Valladolid. There are only three games I can see them picking up points, you know. 
and only one of only one of those games, well, actually two of those games, are at home. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting, guys. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what pans out. So let's go look at the La Liga predictions and let's just see how it compares to mine. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next league. Oh, La Liga predictions five thirty eight. Okay, let's go look at this right here. Sorry for bringing the wrong tab up. So as you guys can see, Real Barcelona is 93. They're, they're expected that, yeah, we're going to win the league. Uh, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Sociedad. They're still going Sociedad at 66%. Villarreal to finish fifth. And wow, they actually have Athletic Club. And they got Batista to finish seventh. Interesting, interesting. And then relegation scrap. They got El Che to go down, Espanol, El Mario. So I got the same relegation. I got the same relegation that also happened as well, which is very, very interesting. Now let's talk about Syria. Syria, man. Syria. Wow. Like I said, guys, remember guys to like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe for new, man. Subscribe for new. So it's a very long video, man. Very, very long video. This might be the longest video I've done on my channel for a while now. So let's look at the standings, guys. Let's talk about this league, man. Let's talk about this league. So one thing's for sure. Napoli have already won the Scudetto. We can already pretty much confirm it. I believe... At the time of recording this video, if they beat their next team, which I think Napoli is playing against, uh, who are they playing against? Salernitana. If they can beat Salernitana, and if Inter, if Lazio draws points to Inter away and San Siro, then Napoli will be confirmed as champions. So, I will just say congratulations in advance to Napoli. What an stunning achievement it is! Beautiful, beautiful man. I'll definitely do a video for it when it's official. But yeah, man, Napoli—they're on course to win the Scudetto. Which is an amazing achievement in itself. Now, for top four, guys. Top four is looking very, very interesting. Because you have Lazio, Juventus, Milan, Roma, and Inter. Now, I feel like for me, Lazio will get top four. I feel like they've been very consistent. And I feel like the fact that there's no European football will be an added bonus to them. And I think they'll do fine. So, I think they'll qualify. I'm not sure they'll get second. But I do think they'll qualify to the Champions League. I'll say they finish third. I think Juventus will actually finish second. I think Juventus... They're going to do it. I feel like they've been very consistent in the Scudetto. And I just feel like for me, they're just a well-run team. I think they're going to just do it. I think they just have enough quality. And they're just a generally consistent team. Now, we get to where things are interesting for that fourth place. Because, guys, we could be in a situation, guys, where only one of the three clubs will get Champions League. Milan, Roma, or Inter. There is a possibility that neither Milan clubs get Champions League, which will be insane to say this you know and considering these two teams are in the champions league semifinals you know that is a crazy crazy thing don't sleep up on Atalanta Atalanta have no European football which is amazing for them and looking at Milan I believe they play Roma this weekend and I believe Milan I think Roma's hosting the game I think Roma is hosting the game yep Roma is hosting the game that's going to be huge you know then they have Inter Monza then Bologna Sarantinia Fiorentina Spezza I mean, Roma, man, they got some very winnable games. I mean, they should be able to beat Bonza. You would expect them to beat Bologna. They should also beat Sarantinia and Spezza. But my concern for Roma is that what's going to happen against Fiorentina? What's going to happen against Inter? What's going to happen against Milan? Now, luckily for them, they host uh, both of those Milan club games, which can be very, very crucial. And Roma did pick up points. I think they beat Inter at the San Siro early in the season, and I think Roma did get a draw against Milan. So if Roma can win one of those two games, I think they're in a great position. Because the thing is with this Inter team is that this Inter team has not been great. They've been so mediocre this season in the Scudetto, guys. They just won against Empoli, which was a huge, huge win. But I'm looking at Inter. They got Lazio at home. And then they got Verona, Roma away, Swallow, the Napoli away. And then they got to play Atalanta and Serena. I mean, Inter, man, they have very winnable games. But the thing is, are they going to win those games? Because they have to start winning now. Because Inter, man, it's not looking great. They may just go all in for the Champions League. Now, when I'm looking at Milan, I think it's looking good for them. Because, uh, let's see what fixtures they got coming up. Let's see what fixtures they got coming up. So, Milan, as you guys can see right here, guys, they have Roma, then Cremonese, which they should win. Lazio, Spezza, then Sampdoria, Juventus, and Verona. So, yeah, for Milan, it's looking really interesting, guys. The top four, guys, is very, very difficult to call. Very difficult to call. But for me personally, guys... This is how I see it panning out. I believe Milan will get fourth place. I think they will. And the reason why I say they'll finish fourth is because I feel like for me, Roma and Inter will be more focused on the Champions League, 
Whereas I think Milan will also be as well, but I feel like Milan just the most consistent of the three. They just know how to get the job done and get the result, even when they're not playing particularly well. And I feel like for Roman Inter, when it's just bad, it's just bad. I just don't see them picking up results when they need to get it done. So I'm going to say that way. I think Roma will actually pick Inter for that fifth place, and I think Inter will finish sixth. So guys, basically, if, if Fiorentina wins the um, Conference League, sorry, if they win the Coppa Italia, then Roma enters in, a big trouble because Inter could be in the Conference League next season, guys. Inter could possibly be in the Conference League because I don't see them getting qualifying. Now, Atalanta, I want to look at their fixtures because we can't sleep upon them because they have no European football. Remember, they got played Torino away, which they should win, then Spezza, then Juventus, then Sarantinia, Verona, Inter, Monza. I mean, Atalanta can actually do it, guys. Because barring the Juventus and Inter game, they have very winnable games. And that Juventus game is at home. So who knows? They may be able to pick up a point. They may be able to beat Juventus because I think they picked up a draw in Turin earlier this season, if I'm not mistaken. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, guys, and everything. So let me know your thoughts, man. Let me know your thoughts. So let me go ahead and actually look at the relegation real quick because I think relegation is pretty straightforward. I think Cremonese, Sam Sampdoria, they're pretty much doomed. They're going to go down. Now, I think that 17th place, 18th place is interesting. And for me, I think Spezza is probably the best. I think they're going to go down. I look at the goal difference, minus 23 goal difference. Because say what you will about Lecce, Empoli, and Verona, their goal difference isn't as bad. And plus, Spezza have been a horrendous form. Three draws and two losses, it's looking really bad. They also got the fewest wins, barring Scramonese and Sampdoria. So I think they're going to go down, guys. I think they're going to go down. Um, it's going to be interesting, though, to see what happens. So let's go look at the Serie A. Let's go look at um, what... Uh, 530 global uh, 538 predicts so um, let's take a look at this and then we're gonna look at Bundesliga and then we're gonna look and then round off things here so Syria and then we're gonna look at a league on I want to look at league on as well so as you guys can see for Syria so they got Napoli to win the league which is obvious then they got Lazio second Juventus third and Milan fourth they got Milan to finish fourth fifth was Roma sixth is Inter and seventh Atalanta that's how I also have it I think the top seven will stay as it is it's just a matter of what the order is going to be because the order could change um, and everything. And then, obviously, the relegation scrap. They got Spezza to go down, Cremonese to go down, and Sam Doria. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty much as expected as I pretty much laid it out there. So, yep, yep, yep. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about uh, Bundesliga, guys. Bundesliga. Bundesliga time, guys. Bundesliga time. All right, let's talk about the Bundesliga, guys. Bundesliga time. All right, so here we guys go. So as you guys can see, Dortmund and Bayern Munich. Let's talk about the title race here, guys. Dortmund, man. Can they win the league? Because for me, guys, I still don't trust Dortmund. Because, yes, they have very winnable games. They should be able to beat both of them. They should be able to beat Wolfsburg. Glad back. But my concerns begin with Augsburg away. And mine's at home. Because Augsburg is going to be battling for relegation. And Mainz is battling for European spots. But we all know what Dortmund love to do. They love to make things harder for themselves. And they love to screw things up. And like I said, guys, you just don't trust Dortmund. You know? Because here's the scary thing, guys. Dortmund can actually win the games that, quote-unquote, should be hard. And then draw the games that they shouldn't be. Like, for example, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dortmund draw points against Bokeem. But the next thing you know... Um, they beat mines the final match day. So, because here's the thing, guys. I don't see Dortmund losing any of the games, but they are gonna they may draw a game. That's the thing, you know. Now, I'm looking at Bayern Munich in particular. Those Bayern games are tough. Bayern Munich have some really difficult games. Bayern have some very, very difficult games. Because Bayern Munich have to still play. They still have to play RB Leipzig. They still have to play Kahn. And they got to play um, Warder Bremen. These are tough games. Especially that Leipzig game. That Leipzig game is really, really tough. And even though it's at home, I still think it's a tough game. You know? And I just feel like for me, for Bayern Munich, man. that it's, I think it's going to come down to a Leipzig game. Because they pretty much have to go near. They have to pretty much win all the games. I think if they draw any more, it's going to hurt. Because the thing is, I think Bayern should be able to beat Hertha. They should be able to beat Warder. They should be able to beat Schalke. They should be able to beat Kong. But for me... It's the Leipzig game I'm concerned with because I'm not sure they beat Leipzig. I'm just not sure. 
Because this Bayern team, man, this is one of the worst Bayern teams I've seen in my life. This midfield is bad. Goretzka has not been great. This attack has been horrendous. Uba Makano is a disaster in its making. And I just look at the decision to sack Nagelsmann in particular. And it's looking like one of the most dumbest decisions you could have made in life. I mean, why do you just wait until the season is done? Like, why sack him mid-season? And it, it's like almost like they were trying to be too greedy. Like, you know what? We want to win everything. And just be humble. Just be humble. You know? And the thing is, I'm not saying that Nagelsmann would have beaten Manchester City the Champions League. But it would have been far more... Um, it wouldn't have been as embarrassing. Because that's embarrassing, man. Bayern Demi scored a single open play goal against Manchester City, man. <sighs> and yeah, man. If Dortmund wins the league, man. Nagelsmann is going to be smiling like crazy. And Bayern's board is going to look so stupid. And that will be... Bayern will be... Like, that will be embarrassing for Bayern. To finish trophyless? Oh, man. We're going to have to have a scary conversation on that channel that if this happens, guys. Because I can, we cannot be in a situation where Bayern goes trophyless. We just cannot have that, guys. We just cannot have that. But as I said, this is the best chance for Dortmund to win the league because this is the worst, one of the worst Bayern teams I've seen in my life. Okay. Now, let's talk about top four. Union Berlin, I think, will be will be fine. I think they'll get top four. My concern begins with Leipzig. I don't know if Leipzig have enough. Because the thing is with Freiburg is that they're looking great. But I will say this for Freiburg. They got some tough games. They got to play Leipzig, Union Berlin, then Frankfurt. These are three tough games. Even Wolfsburg is not easy per se. So, I think for Freiburg, they're going to be close. But I think they're just going to fall short. I think they're going to fall short, guys. And I think they'll just about miss out. Because I'm looking at Leipzig's fixtures in particular. Leipzig just have some pretty easy games. Like, barring the Freiburg and Bayern game, they should be able to beat Warner. They should be able to beat Schalke. And they should be able to beat Hoffenheim. You know? It's just those two away games for me is going to be interesting. Because if they can pick up a point against Bayern away, that will be crucial for them. You know? And everything. So, it's going to be very, very interesting. And they, and then for me, Leverkusen, I know they're in the pecking order, but I don't think Leverkusen will get top four. I think that's too much to ask. I mean, let's see how many points are behind. Um, yeah, I mean, there are, yes, yeah, six points. It's, 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 it's too much. Six points is too much. I, I just don't see it. And especially with them more focused on the Europa League, I would imagine. I don't see them getting, like, top four. And Mines, man. Just don't sleep up on Mines. Mines be, might be able to get European football, guys. They might be able to get Conference League there as well. So, I think the Bundesliga table will finish as it is. Except I think Leipzig will jump above Freiburg. And I think, yeah, I'm going to say that way. I think Leipzig will jump above Freiburg. Now, as far as relegation... Hertha Berlin is doomed. I think they've been so bad. They've been disappointing this season. Defensively shambolic. They've been garbage this season. Now, Schalke. Credit to them, man. Schalke made things close. They're not, they are making this competitive. But I still think it'll go down. And I actually think Boking will actually get the relegation playoff spot. So, I think Stuttgart will just about survive because of severe goal difference. And I just look at Boking, man. The goal difference is really bad. Minus 34 points. So, Hoffenheim, man. They're also in this too. So, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Actually, before we um, look at the things, I want to see their fixtures, Hoffenheim. So, Hoffenheim, they got to play Stuttgart in the final match today. That is insane. That's going to be very interesting. And um, let's see, for Stuttgart, who do they have? Stuttgart, for me, they got Hertha, and then Hoffenheim. Tough games, man, tough games. And the Augsburg, Augsburg could also go down as well. Augsburg, let's see which games they have. They got for um, they got Bokeem. Yeah, I mean that goal Bokeem game is probably their easiest. They may actually go down, guys. They may go down, but they they do host um, uh, they do host two games against Union Berlin and Dortmund, which they may get something against um, both of those teams per se. So that's looking very interesting. Now let's go look at the Bundesliga predict uh, Bundesliga. What it says here on the Global Club soccer page so we're 34 minutes in guys we have one more lead to go through guys and then we're done man i done hey, if you made it this far man let me know in the comments because this is a been a mouthful man huge huge video so as you guys can see byron is expected to win the league it's still 62 percent and dormant is going to come 37 percent. and that's also another thing i forgot to mention guys byron have a way superior goal difference at dormant so that could come very handy so the guy you know to finish third Leipzig to finish fourth friday to finish fifth and six leverkusen seventh mines yeah, I mean, that's how I also see it. And now, relegation. Okay. They got Hertha Berlin to go down, as I said. Schalke to go down. And they actually have Stuttgart. 
Interesting, interesting. I'm going to go with Bokeem personally, but you can make an argument for Stuttgart. And now, we move on to everyone's favorite league. <laughs> everyone's favorite league, man. League on Uber Eats. League on Uber Eats. Where are we at? 35 minutes. Last league, man. Last league to discuss. Okay. So. Um, standings. Standings, 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 standings. Okay. PSG is going to win the league. We already know this. I don't even need to discuss this. It's very obvious. Now, I think the second through fifth is very interesting because, guys, Lille will get um, the fifth place team will get um, Conference League because normally they would get Europa League, but because of the fact that Nantes or Talese will win the um, the cup, one of them will be guaranteed Europa League despite the fact they're in the uh, mid table scrap. Personally, for me, I think I'm going to go with Marseille to finish second. I just feel as though that Marseille just have it in them. Lons, they're a very good team. I respect them for what they've done. I just look at Marseille fixtures and they have very winnable games. They have Auxerre. They should be able to win. That Marseille Lens game is going to be a uh, Lons game is going to be tough. Then if Andrews, they should win. I think Lille, they also should be beating. Brest, they should be beating. Ayasio. You know, for his, for Lons, on the other hand, I hope I'm pronouncing this name right. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments if I am. They have Toulouse. Um, then they also have Marseille. Um, Oh, actually, no, I think it's the cup final. Is this the cup final? No, no, this is not the cup final. Where is the cup final? I don't, I don't, oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. It's with Nantes. What am I saying? Anyways, forgot what I said there. Anyways, they have, um, Toulouse, and the Marseille, then Reims, Lorient, Asajo, Oxer. Now, to be fair, the games are not hard as well, but the thing is with, for me, Lens is that they're a good team, but I feel like they just stumble up, they draw points when they shouldn't be. Like, for example, I'm looking at this right here. Uh, where is it? Um. Yeah, they draw points to Montpellier, draw points to Brest, they draw points to Nice, Troyes. You know, I'm just saying is that I feel like they're a good team. They're very well. I want them to get Champions League. I actually would prefer they get Champions League over Marseille. I just, I just feel like they're gonna let me down, and I think that Marseille game is gonna be crucial. I think in Marseille, because I could see Marseille actually, um, getting a result in that game. I could see that happening. Um, and so yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see how it pans out, guys, because. They don't play until like May second, so there, there's like, uh, there's a long period in time in there between then. So, I just feel like for me, for Lons, man, it's gonna be difficult, man. It's gonna be difficult, difficult, difficult. And those games, it's gonna be interesting, guys. Interesting. Now, I think fourth will be Monaco. I think they'll be fine. I just don't see any team. And then for me, that fifth place is interesting. We have between Lille, Rennes, and Lyon. Now let's go look at Lille games real quick. Lille for me. They have a, a Yasio, which they should win. Reims is going to be tough. Monaco is going to be difficult. Marseille is going to be difficult. Nantes, they should be able to win. And Troyes. So, I mean, the, those games for Lille, man, it's looking tough for them. It's looking tough. Now, I'm looking at Brent's fixtures in particular, right? And we can't slip up on Lyon. Lyon can also do it, too. Rennes, they got Andres. They should win. Nice away is going to be difficult. Troyes at home, they should be able to beat. A Yasio, they should be able to beat. A Monaco, they sh Monaco's going to be tough. And then they've got Brest. So they should be able to win those games. Um, and then I'm looking at Leon in particular. It's looking tough for Leon, man. They got Strasbourg away, Montpellier, Clemmert Foot, Monaco, Reims, and then Nice. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at all these teams. All, a lot of these teams have around the same kind of difficulty level. It's just whether or not they can be consistent or not. And that's going to be the important thing. So this is how I see the, fit, the table finishing out, guys. The, the European spots, at least. PSG to come first. I think I'm going to go with Marseille to finish second. Lons to finish third. Fourth Monaco and fifth Leo. I think it's gonna stay as it is. Now for relegation, guys. Andrews is dead. They're, they're gonna go down. It's obvious. Ayasio is gonna also go down. Troy's will go down. Now I think for that 17th spot, it's gonna be very interesting because for me personally, I think Oxford will go down because I'm looking at Oxford fixtures. Minus 23 goal difference. It's looking really bad for them. And I'm just looking at their fixtures. I just don't see them beating Marseille. Clemmer Foot, no. Brest, that that's a huge game. PSG, no. Talese, no. And maybe Lens, they might be able to do if they're still in a relegation scrap. But I think for me, what's very important is that they keep winning the games that they need. Because I think those wins they got over Ayasio and Troyes have been very, very crucial. And especially against Nantes, they had a three-game win streak there. Um, it's just a matter of can they, pick, they, can they avoid defeats. Okay, so yeah, like I said, guys, let's go and look at what the, um, 
they're saying on here guys let's go look at here so leak on guys leak on what is um what are they saying here guys leak on league one prediction so they got psg to top obviously to win the league marseille to come in second okay and lens to come third monaco to finish fourth and leo to finish fifth just like i said guys just like i said and now for relegation they're gonna go at andres ayosio troy's and oxir just like what i predicted guys just like what i predicted so it's gonna be very interesting guys i did a comprehensive review of the top five leagues i went through a lot in this video guys 40 minutes please let me know if you made it this far guys i hope you guys did enjoy and like I said, guys, please remember, guys, to like and subscribe if you're new on here. Comment below your thoughts, comment section below, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure, you guys, also consider becoming a member of the channel to guys as members' videos. And yeah, like I said, guys, check out my little podcast in the description below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.